it's Tim Harridge. Hey, Tim Harridge here. Hey, Sean here. What's going on, Sean? Man, living the life, living the dream. Ah, living the dream. I just got through loading my smoker up. Got to, uh, got to head over to, uh, my, got to take it to my house to, for the turkey tomorrow. Oh, nice. Oh yeah, the oldest drove in from college yesterday. And got here about midnight, and uh, I think I put it on Facebook. It's a, a new life phase for me. Waiting up on Thanksgiving week for the. The, the prodigal son to return, you know? <laughs> yep. Well, that's uh, what parents do. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, so my I'm, daughter. Uh, go ahead. Well, I'd say my daughter uh, decided to stay in Nebraska for uh, for Thanksgiving. Ah. I am. I am driving to my house right now. I, I let the time get away from me, so I was. I'm very happy that I was actually able to start this thing on my phone, uh, so people could kind of start getting in. But I'll be I'll be switching to my uh, computer here in about five minutes. Okay. How's that How's that Florida deal going? I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but yeah, no. Uh, so uh, we're past the due diligence stage where we've got. Uh, earnest money that just went hard so uh we've got uh, institutional financing uh that we're checking which one will give us the best opportunity and uh hoping to close next month is that on a bridge loan uh we're trying to get perm loan but it may be bridge to perm gotcha the the biggest challenge is it was all individually owned. Right. And so we don't have any rent comps to support. I mean, we got plenty of comps in the area, but we don't have any hard comps for that complex. So the lenders are hesitant about doing a loan on it for, for perm financing. Well, if you're, if, you, if you're looking for another bridge op option, you ought to check with Jeff Tennyson and his group at Lima One. Uh, they, they really like that small balance, uh, multifamily kind of bridge to perms type stuff. What's his name? Well, his name is Jeff Tennyson's the CEO, but uh, there's a guy named Courtney Newman that we, uh, we send some deals to. I'm happy to connect you. Okay. You know, a lot of those uh, kind of portfolio lenders backed off the multifamily. We started doing it first at B2R, but then uh, and everybody else started to, but like Corvest and even B, and, and I don't even know what B2R calls themselves now, Finance of America. Uh, they've kind of, you know, shelved that, but Lima One's doing a lot of it. So, uh, might be, I mean, and, and you know, they're, they're used to looking at things out of the box, right? I mean, they look at these single family portfolios, they look at multifamily portfolios. So I think, you know, sounds like, sounds like you kind of have a hybrid deal that may need a hybrid type lender until yeah. it's stabilized. Yeah, that's what, that's what we're finding out. The rates are right. considerably different between the perm loan, you know, at four, four and a half percent. Now we're looking at eight. Eight and a half. Yeah, but, yeah, but I, I, I guess at the end of the day, if you if you can if you can uh, uh, be at eight for twelve months while you get it all stabilized, then be at four and a half at a much higher number because it's stabilized and producing. Uh, hey, you know, true. Uh, if you get all your capital out of it, it may not matter. Yep, <laughs> I agree. All right, so let me see how this phone works. Uh, I think I've hit admit to everybody that's buzzed in. 
I think your gray is really just coming in, man. Letting your beard grow out. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I'm I, I'm trying, buddy. I'm trying. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's uh, it's one of those things, right? <laughs> So let's see. There's Andy. There's an eight eight one seven number. I'm learning how to do this. Who's the eight one seven? I think that may be Rod or Priscilla. Uh, Can you hear me, at Priscilla? Hey, Priscilla. Hey, Priscilla. Hello. Hello. I'm driving to uh, Arkansas, so I've got all muted again for the road noise. Yeah, no worries, no worries. I've got, I'm trying this on my Zoom app and it keeps uh, muting me <laughs> or, or turn, turn, turning off my video. It says safe driving mode. Well, y'all are, y'all no, are all the, in. This is the fourth time I've had to connect. So for some reason it keeps disconnecting me. So we are too. Hey, Tim, this is Andy. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, buddy. All right, man. I turned off. I didn't have my camera because I figured everybody's going to be in a weird position. You know, you're driving. I just turned my camera on. I'm sitting on the couch with my little dog with Christmas ornaments trying to figure out where they're going to go. <laughs> well, that's a, that's important stuff, Andy. Yep. You know, got to go get paperwork done and you got to start worried about the next task. Always. There's always the next task. <laughs> I wonder what goes through people's mind when you when you turn on your blinker and they speed up so you can't get over. It's, it's, it's something that really plagues me. Like, what goes through your mind? Like, oh my God, this guy's trying to signal and get over. Let's speed up so he can. You know what I do like about Thanksgiving and actually Christmas too? As you see a lot of old classic cars from people that haven't pulled out of their driveway in <laughs> <laughs> like a year. <laughs> right. Uh, so I've admitted another uh, 214 number. Hey, that's me. Is that Rod? Uh, hey, how you doing, Tim? Fantastic, sir. How are you? <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, I'm on my cell phone right now. I might drop off here in a sec. But let me let me just ask you a, a quick question question before we get started. I got a um a house yeah. here in, in uh South Dallas, and um, I've given the guy a, 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 a month to move out because I've been busy doing other things. I just went over there and it's still full of furniture. And I told the guy, like Friday, whatever's left, we're gonna trash it. I mean, have have y'all ever dealt with something like that? Somebody just didn't move. They they already moved, right? He's on Section Eight. He's already moved, but he still just got a bunch of stuff over there. <clears throat> you know, I mean, uh, I I think you're in a, a perplexing situation. I mean, you're gonna have to look at the lease that he that you inherited, uh, and um, uh, uh you know, kind of dissect that because you may actually, if he has a, if, if the occupant has a valid lease, I think you're going to have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, post and, um, uh, uh, go through an eviction. Yeah. So Rod, this is, this is Sean. So I've had a couple hey, scenarios sir. just like that. So if if they feel like the contents are valuable to them and but they're not going to come pick it up, uh, I had one instance where it was just a bunch of clothes on the floor and trash, and so we trashed it out. But the uh, the lady came back and said that was valuable belongings. Uh, yeah, just, she was just looking to try to get some money out of the deal. So. Uh, I went to the Texas Property Code and sent her a letter of the place and location that we would have an auction for, for oh. her stuff. And, uh, of course, she never showed up. 
and I didn't have her stuff because I already trashed it out. Uh, but that just, that was one technique I got her off my back um, by sending yeah. her certified mail when and where the auction would be. If, and then I've had other people where you go and do a eviction, a writ of possession, and then you can legally trash it out and put it out, you know, by the street. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, that that's yeah. I, I think it's just going to depend on what the structure. Yeah. What's the structure? I mean, did, was there a lease in place? Yep. Yeah, it was a lease, but he moved out, right? And um, he has a new place. I did all that part as far as, um, you know, allowing him to move out. He has his new place. He just left a bunch of stuff over there that he keeps saying he's going to come and get and hadn't done it. And it's been like a month. Has he uh, surrendered the keys? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, so... Is the property left unsecure? No, it's it's still secure. It's I mean it's secure. He's just taking his time about moving all his other stuff. Right? So so you I but mean it, can it, you can, can you can you claim that he's abandoned the property? Um, well, it'd be tough to do that because it's still full of furniture. That's that. I mean, it's refrigerator like. The garage is still full of stuff, but I could make the claim. Maybe, maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe call Section Eight or something. I guess. And see what the is, it, 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 is, is the person on Section Eight on their new property? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I'd call the housing authority and be like, "Hey, I'm about to file." Well, I, I would tell the guy, uh, "Look, I'm about to call the housing authority. Tell them you've abandoned the property." And, you know, this could mess with your voucher. You need to get the stuff out. I'll give you through the weekend. But on Monday, I'm calling the housing authority and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm posting eviction and citing that you've abandoned the property. Uh, and, and, and just tell them, you know, that'll go on your credit and the housing authority will get notified. And, you know, to do, play the good cop, bad cop, you'd be like, you know, hey, I'm trying to work with you. I'm trying not to mess you up, but uh, I got bills to pay too, you know. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just be a little hard ass. But I, yeah, I just kind of lost. I was so busy doing other stuff, and I said, well, I'll get to it when I get to it. Just went over there today, and I'm like, man, all this stuff is still there, and I'm just like, you know. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll probably send him a letter and uh, make it formal. Uh, yeah, just save all your text message and voicemails and stuff from him so that you have documentation. Uh, well, Sean, uh, we're past noon now. Why don't you uh, kick off with the first five minutes? Uh, I'm going to put myself on mute uh, and while I kind of transition from my vehicle to my laptop. Okay. Well, since our uh, last call, uh, I bought uh, three houses. Uh, two of them, uh, they're all single family homes, three two twos in the Metroplex. Uh, two of them I, I kept as rental and uh, one of them I'm owner financing, and so in the process of, of doing that, uh, I secured uh, uh, financing uh, with a credit partner, so brought in some people uh, that partnered with the deal, and so we're averaging about uh, $350 cash flow per property per month each. Uh, so definitely home run deals. Uh, in addition to the single family home, I uh, got a contract uh, about three weeks ago on a Florida property, a multifamily. And that property is eight yeah. units in Fort Lauderdale. It's on the Isle of Venice. And that deal also has eight boat slips. And the value add on that, the reason why I got into it is because uh, the Boat slips are a licensed marina. And so as more and more of the canals in that area, uh, they just don't have where you can rent out boat slips anywhere on the, there's only one other marina in the whole area. So that has increased the value significantly. Matter of fact, we've got a letter of intent for, from a company to lease all eight boat slips for a year. 
uh, and that'll bring the valuation to about $2 million just for the boat slips alone. So pretty excited about that. Uh, due diligence is done. We're doing the institutional funding right now uh, to see if we can get uh, permanent financing or we'll have to go to uh, temporary financing. And so that one I'll be raising a million dollars. I've got about 800,000 already raised. Uh, this is a home run. Uh, so I'll be reaching out to my friends and family probably over the next 30 days uh, to see who wants to fill up the, the last remaining spots with us on this deal. It's a two year get in, get out. Uh, the, the biggest thing guys is, uh, you know, I'm being mentored by a, a guy that's done uh, multifamily for 35 years. And matter of fact, he goes around the nation speaking to people on multifamily investing. So uh, between him, uh, my other partner, Daniel Klein, and off of our group here, Kenny Wright, flew out to Florida to look at the deal with us. So uh, him and Daniel are experts in rehabs and what we need to do to improve the position of the property condition uh, in order to fix it up and get top rents for that area, which Fort Lauderdale, I don't know if you guys have been there, but it's like, holy cow, it's like a gorgeous area. I mean, this is really posh and and so I guess the biggest thing for me is raising capital through Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, I've had a pretty easy time raising capital in the past for single family homes, but uh, I, I've never done it over Christmas time. So I just want to see if anybody's had experience or maybe can give me some ideas of, uh, you know, what to do not only on this deal, but future apartment deals. And that's, that's kind of it for me. Been traveling, goofing off a lot, uh, spending time with the family, living on my residual income. So life has been really, really good. That's it. Is that my Can't five be. minutes? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, all right, can you hear me now? Yeah, you look good. Uh, apparently I'm in here twice, but I don't yeah, want to mess up. I don't want to mess up the recording. So I just want to leave that other one logged in. Okay. Uh, hey, Jim, how are you? Good. Well, uh, Jim, I don't think you made the last call, did you? We can't hear you now, Jim. Can you hear me? Yeah, now yeah. we can. Okay, okay, good. I had a new, uh, new speaker and new uh, camcorder, so. Well, Jim, uh, I don't think you made the last call. Why don't you uh, say hello to everyone, introduce yourself, and just talk a little bit about what you got going on in your business. Uh, sure, yeah, I, I was on the call October, I think. Um, anyway, uh, I am finishing up two flips. I'm out of Pittsburgh, so I've got a finance background. And uh, I have one flip that uh, is sold, and I'm going to have that. Uh, I unfortunately, sold it to a pain in the butt uh, buyer, uh, but that happens. So we're uh, wrapping up uh, the extensive uh, post contract negotiations, and I'll have that closed next week. So that'll be a good one to get closed. Uh, nice, uh, nice profit margin on that one. So uh, pleased with that one. And I have another one uh, that's a, a extensive, a, almost a hundred thousand rehab, and uh, we'll wrap that up here in about six weeks. So that's good. Um, uh, I'm shopping for new single family houses in Pittsburgh so I can keep uh, my crew busy. Uh, but the most uh, most important thing that I'm working on, and uh, I think we talked about it a little bit, I'm trying to get into self-storage. So what I've done for the last 30 days is uh, I, I purchased a course and uh, went through uh, some extensive training with some audio books and books in the training and uh, just everything I could get my hands on. Uh, I pulled down a couple uh, storage units uh, from some of the bigger brokers and I went through a full analysis on that, got my spreadsheet, my analysis all set up. And I purchased a, uh, about a 2000 uh, facility mailing list. So uh, hopefully within, uh, by the end of next week, I'll go ahead and get that uh, mailer out and get it rolling. Tim, I'm jealous if you're outside. Yeah, well, that's uh, Texas. Don't worry, it's gonna be raining cats and dogs tomorrow and uh... Uh, it, it'll be uh, 90 degrees next week. 
<laughs> it will have snow. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I'm excited to get the self-storage mailer going. Uh, I'm mailing to small one to four uh, person uh, facilities for a number of employees and uh, uh, looking to try to get something under contract by February. Uh, at least get, get a letter of intent in, get it accepted. So that's kind of, that's, that's, uh, that's my big push right now. Nice. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to do, uh, I got to get a website up, up and rolling for the self storage. And, uh, I think I'm going to do two phase mailing. I'm going to try to, since it'll be my first self storage, I'm trying to buy something within three or four hours. So that's, that's what, uh, that's what I'm working on. So that's pretty much, pretty much it. That and the holidays. Nice. Holidays are distracting. Hey, Mark, how are you today? Doing good, Tim. Can you hear me? Absolutely, buddy. All right. What so, are you guys up to these days? I can give you a quick update on what we've had going on. I didn't make the October call, but uh, uh, since our class that we had together out there in Rockwall, we have refinanced three of our rental properties with RCN. Um, I got interest rates from like 5.3 to 4.6 on those. So I was pretty happy with that. Uh, depending on how many points I paid, the first two I paid two points, that last one that I got at 4.6, I paid three points to get to that point, that, that interest rate. Um, in the last, well, I, I signed papers on one house yesterday, we closed on that is a sale and I sold one the week before. So those two houses, add them together it's a little over a half million dollars and so man i was really glad to get that off the books <laughs> been paying a lot of interest on those two houses uh, one of them was out in royce city had a couple of acres and a big house and a swimming pool the other one was in mesquite and uh, so anyway got those off my inventory and i bought a couple of other houses since we met and doing rehabs i'm keeping those for rental properties and um, I think that's kind of the highlights. I've made a couple of notes while the guy with the self storage ideas was talking. And so anyway, I like that idea. I've all, I've had fantasies about being a self storage owner or two. I may have to pick your brain on that sometime, Jim. Well, I would be happy to, happy to work with you. Of course, I haven't bought one yet, so. I understand, but well, yeah, you, why you track down a course and all that kind of stuff. I haven't even got that far yet, so. Yeah, one of the, one of the reasons I joined the group to uh, keep keep me moving forward. There you go. Which course did you buy, Jim? You don't mind sharing? Uh, it's Mike. Um, Mike. Oh, let me let me get it. I have to go look it up here. Michael, somebody. Mike Wagner, I think. I'll, I'll double check that. My wife just yelled, yelled what do I think I'm doing? <laughs> Having a conference call. Uh, um, well, cool. Okay, Matt. Well, let us know, I mean, how that course was. And don't Mark, if you end up wanting to uh, uh, look at a course or something, you can, uh, I mean, hey, you know, some of these courses, I just, it just kills me. I mean, I've taken all these courses and some of them are great and some of them are just full of it. Uh, you just never know. Uh, Hey, Priscilla, are you still there? Yes, I am. I had you on mute. Well, while we got you on the phone before you lose lose us in the middle of Arkansas, why don't you, uh, I know you and I talked the other day about your mobile home and land ideas and, and, and needs. Why don't you uh, kind of tell the group everything that you got going on and um, see if anybody can add some light, in, light into that. Okay, that'd be awesome. And if you would take notes for me, if uh, we come up with anything, I'd appreciate it. Well, it'll be recorded, uh, so we'll post the recording, so you'll be oh, able to yeah, go back and yeah. listen to it. Perfect, perfect. Um, I have a small mobile home park with six houses, six mobiles in it that I uh, rent, all of them. And that's what I'm doing. I'm not doing any owner finance, but I'm doing rentals. And then I have several lots. Um, I have a couple of stick uh, houses as, um, 
all my stuff is rentals. But then I also work as a hospice nurse about three-fourths time. So I'm kind of doing quite a few different things all at once. The latest deal that I'm working on and what I'm what I really want is just somebody to lend me money. Um, it's a 2.2 acres with a double wide mobile home on it right now that's got to do some work on it, but it'll um, should rent for about a thousand dollars. And then it's got I should be able to buy there's 0.8 acres that adjoin it. So I'm trying to talk to the city. It's in the county, but the small city that it, where it's sitting, to um, at least put in four houses now, but also to plot it out that I can, when the city comes in with septic in that area, or excuse me, it's already septic. When the city comes in with city sewer, then I can add probably 10 or 15 more houses to it so but right now I just need to take possession um, of the 2.2 acres in the house I've got it under contract for 110,000 and it'll cost it only a few thousand to rehab the house so if anybody you knows mean? you know I've thought about joint venture but I what I really like to do is just have somebody lend me some money at five or six or seven percent and then I'm planning to buy houses and move them in as slowly as I go. What, uh, uh, so 110,000, uh, five, six, seven percent for how long, uh, are you looking for that private money? Long enough that I could get several other houses in there and then probably, well, I'd love to do it as a commercial loan to begin with, or I, my, the company that I, you, my LLC I've had for about 10 years and I've had different houses in it and I've done flips but so I'd love to just do a business receive a business loan and again five years I mean if by that time I'm going to have be able to have brought in other houses and, and I could figure things out but you know maybe even just three years the balloon note at three years I just need to be able to secure the property Patricia, right now. You're kind of breaking up a, Patricia, you're kind of breaking up a little. Uh, so I'm going to jump to Rod. Maybe you'll be in a better signal area in about five okay. minutes, okay? Rod, uh, why don't you kick off and talk about uh, some of the things you've got going on? Okay. Um, well, in the past um, 30 days, I've refinanced uh, four uh, houses. Um, I've actually bought three to add as rental property and I flipped one and um, I'm set to close on another rental property on um, in the next two weeks um, and so kind of where I'm at now is I got like three vacancies and, and so I'm in the process of you know getting them back online and 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 getting them rented out and then we're working on a flip um, a flip now in Duncanville that uh, just like a, a cosmetic flip that we're working on so hopefully I can just get finished with that in the next couple of weeks and get that sold in January um, but where I'm at now um, with all of these vacancies that it's like I'm not I'm kind of afraid to even buy any more uh, because um, I've never had three vacancies before and I'm kind of nervous and uh, so I'm looking at kind of putting the process together to is it, is it just it, it, get some help. Did they all just become vacant or is it a rent a function of how much the rent is or what? Well, no, I, one of them became vacant and then I bought, I bought three and two of them were vacant. Yeah. And so that's why it's, it's three down. We did all this within the last 30 days, right? Okay, so they're va your, 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 your big vacancy issues that they're new acquisitions. Right, right, right. Tim, can I add something here on the insurance side? We don't have any vacancy clause in our insurance policy. So if you want to go and write them under us and you're worried about coverage on your vacancy side, um, you don't have to worry about that. We don't have any vacancy problems on our insurance product. 
And by the way, back in 2008, when I had my own insurance agency and was running big construction, the multi-unit um, um, storage facilities, if you can GC that on your own and build it new and then own it, it's big money. There's a big margin in that, and I'm starting to see the market go right back to it, and that was for whoever was going and talking about the uh, storage facilities. Wow. Just, just my comment. Yep. Well, Ron's an insurance wow. agent, so I'm pretty sure he's got that vacancy thing nailed. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, Rod, I mean, well, what else you got going on? Then I'll say some things. I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I'm kind of, like, afraid to... Uh, you know, do any more deals. Uh, I'm afraid for any more deals to come my way just because I can't handle it. Like, so I'm just, I just really need to get my get my processes processes together, get some more people on my team uh, to kind of offload, like, you know, leasing them out for me and running that rehab uh, for me because I'm, you know, I'm kind of at my wit's end right now. So. Yeah, you know, Priscilla, let's see if you're in a better uh, signal area real quick, and then I'm going to jump in. I want to say some things about that. Okay. Can you? I just passed the cell tower, but now I'm down in a valley again. <laughs> well, um, the, on, your, count, on, your deal, on your deal, it's almost three acres. It's got a mobile home. You're buying it for 110. You're looking for sub-six financing for five years. Is that kind of what to summarize where you were? Yes. Even, even head, three years. Even three years in the balloon. Off the top of my head, there's two options slash problems. One, if you could go with the community bank with 20% down and they're just going to probably look at it as a land only deal. Uh, the problem with that is once you start parceling it up, you know, you got to work out release clauses and, 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 uh, you got to get them on board with the replat and they have to assign a certain dollar amount for each parcel and then a release provision. Typically it's like, you know, if they assign $10,000 per parcel, then they want to be paid 120% of that 10,000 to release that one Tim. parcel. Uh, Tim, yep. they're all going to be, it's all rentals. I'm not, I'm not parceling anything up. Okay. So you just want to put a bunch of mobile homes on it and own it as one contiguous parcel. Repeat the last part of it. You just want to I put, a, want bunch to put a bunch of mobile homes on it and, and own it as one contiguous parcel. Correct. Just like my other park. Yeah. And you, so yeah, you know all, all about the, all you know all about the septic requirements and how it goes into the county. We'll get involved in all that, right? Yes. Okay. I, it sounds like, I mean, just... It, it, my first gut is that you probably need to find some country club money for that one. Uh, someone with an IRA or some cash sitting in the bank that they'd like to make, you know, a pretty decent return for three to five years. Uh, I, I, uh, uh, I don't think any of the, the, the larger scale lenders are going to do that. And, uh, I don't think uh, do that. So that's what I yeah. look for. Well, and the good thing is, is that it's going to cash flow, I mean, just as is, as soon as I get it, you know, a few thousand put into it and get a renter, it'll cash flow still two or three hundred dollars a month. So, but yeah, are you that's the, uh, kind of, the lender any upside in the deal or just interest? Well, that's what I, that's the kind of where I am wondering whether I need to work with somebody who might want a joint venture and continue to develop it with me or, um, I just am busy with my regular job, and so it's uh, it kind of going to depend upon whatever God sends to me, I guess, at this point. Where's the property at? Uh, out near Azel, where I am. Patricia, your big hedge. That's northwest of Fort Wright. Yeah. Patricia, yeah. your big hedge is whether or not they're going to come and put institutional um, uh, water and sewer in there as opposed to septic. If they decide to go and do that for you, then you're golden. If not, then you got to go and work on your cash flow and what you got and what your plan is right now. It's yeah, already I got think, institutional I think water. I think that's her hope is to hold it long enough to where it ends up being part of the city, Andy, and then, then she has a developable piece of land that she can just clear the mobiles off. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
I'm saying right. and it's already got it's well, yeah, it's be- already got water. It all has water already from the city. It's just that the septic and the city is actually working on a contract with the uh, excuse me, a grant, a government grant to bring sewer lines into it. So I already know on my one that I have fixed, I already know I can plunk down four more homes and um, you know work work with it that way. It's just whether I can duplicate it again on this other area that um, you know that I just need money for. You said they're working on a grant. Did they? Are they going to pass a bond to put that sewer in, or is it just one of those community development, uh, rural development grants they're trying to? The latter. Yeah, you it'll say. be a grant. It's not no bond has to be passed or anything. No. So it'll be a sweet deal for that first one that I have already for sure. It's just the next one. I just it's going to be a you know one by one by one that I got to grow it slowly. Well, I'll just tell you just from my point of view if you get to where you want to pay like a preferred interest rate of five or six and talk about sharing some of the upside that's something that you know my wife and i may be yes. interested in uh, uh yeah, as long as there's you know a, a good deal structure and you know because at five to six percent right we make 12 to 18 on our cash right now so right oh yeah i understand yeah so you know, if you get to where, I mean, I know you're going to flush out the options to where maybe you can just get a straight interest only guy or gal, but if you get to where you're thinking about doing a uh, more of a, uh, uh, with some upside, let me know. I, I, and, uh, yes, I will. I'd be happy to take it. Thank so, you. This, this is Sean again. So I've raised some private capital uh, at 5% uh, here recently as well. And... It it's, was a little tougher for me to to get the five percent money. Uh, so one of the things I did to sweeten the deal is I just put a flat dollar amount uh, when the to the end of the term. So if it's a three-year term, I just put a flat dollar amount, like a thousand dollars or or three thousand dollars, and so they just felt like they had some upside, and it kept my cash flow requirements up front better for me yeah that, but that was ira money and so they didn't they didn't really care as far as they just wanted it to they were sitting on cash and just wanted uh you know some return they wanted the money to start working for them can i contact um ira companies would they do they have any obviously they're not going to give me any names but do they um can you send out anything to any of their customers? I don't think that works that way from what I remember. From, from what I've seen is they have different like meetups uh, and you can go to those meetings and just bring your deals and, and there'll be people there that are sitting on cash in their IRA. Yeah. Uh, personally, I did that back in the day and I had a real tough time just raising capital because there was a lot of competition there and it seemed like everybody was a seller and nobody was a buyer uh, at those type of deals. But but I've had friends that have had good success. Um, I personally just talk to everybody and if ever, anybody ever was laid off or fired from a previous employer, then I just ask them did they have a 401k at the previous employer and then where's that money is typically usually sitting with Fidelity, and then I can help them yes. to, to deals like you're talking about. But that's that's how I build my raising capital is just by talking to people and find out what they do. But it's taken a while to do that. Yeah. Very good. And Thank as you. Far as, uh, as far as the IRA company being willing to email out a deal, they're, they're restricted from being uh, a part of uh, any um, uh, promoting syndications or deals and they won't even let you like sponsor any of their events if you're a syndicator uh, and so um, like Sean said you know the Quest IRA meetup their million dollar mixer is a pretty good one here in Dallas but like Sean said I mean if there's a hundred people in the room there's five with money uh, and there's 95 looking for money uh, <laughs> So uh, 
it, that, that's definitely a long row to hoe, but um, I think, you know, I, I think if you just, you know, post in some of these social media groups or, uh, you know, uh, you know, even get together two or three people that, you know, have 50,000 a piece or 25,000 a piece, they can kick in and form a little LLC and, that's not even a syndication if they're all the original partners in it. So, uh, just a couple ways I'd probably go about it. Uh, have you ever, Sam, have you ever purchased like a credited investor list or know people that have had success with that? We did when we launched our Elevate Fund, but then we just found out that we don't have the gumption for the cold calling and the and those lists are just so beat down with the oil and gas guys i mean sean you probably we, we all probably get those calls uh I, I i never found any success with it um in one fund that we had started back in 08 or 09 i can't remember uh we had the boiler room operation cold calling and you know it was productive i wouldn't say it was successful um i think if you're looking for something that's a, a a shorter fuse type thing not an established operation either uh you're really looking for that one-off guy or gal that is interested in real estate and is willing to put up some cash and learn alongside of you if that makes sense right can i add something here tim on that from yeah. being in in multiple seminars and having you know is historically having uh, financial licenses there are restrictions and qualifications you have to have if you're pulling in investors and they see you're setting up something and you're going you got to have restrictions on your investors and who they are and make sure they're qualified investors having certain amount of money in the bank etc yeah that's not applicable in one deal one investor or if it's a group of people coming together to start a company where that's applicable under the uh, uh, Regulation 506, uh, A, B, C, and D in the uh, SEC code is when you have an existing investment vehicle and you're attempting to place investors inside that vehicle. That's when you have the, uh, the registration requirements and you have to prove that they're, you have to verify they're an accredited investor and things like that. But like, if I wanted to take the six people on this call right now and say, okay, Guys, I got this hundred thousand. I got this sixty thousand dollar deal. Let's all do it together, and we'll all put ten grand a piece in. Uh, there's no restrictions on that because we have a pre-existing relationship and it's a brand new thing. That's correct. That's the intimate yeah. knowledge clause, and that works. Yep. Mm. So, like, you know, Andy, we were going to try to buy Arcana. You know, if I had this group and I said, okay, guys, I need five million bucks. Let's. You know, let's all put a mill in. You know, there's no uh, Reg D requirements on that one uh, because we all know each other, and uh, it would be a new venture, not an existing venture. Right. So I'll talk about the craziness that I'm dealing with real quick. Uh, you know, I I haven't recorded a podcast in of uh, two months, and that I was really on a roll there. I almost recorded one last week that was going to say, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, because if you follow me on social media, you know that I hate flipping houses. Like I, I hate it with a passion uh, <laughs> because I hate contractors and I hate floor decor and I hate Home Depot. Uh, last month, my wife and I were joking around. I looked at my cell phone records. I pre-authorized like 120 Home Depot text to confirms on my phone. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was just insane. And uh, literally, we blew through like a quarter million in cash without even blinking, and then sold some houses and refinanced some houses, then blew through another 100K. And like, it, it was just so, it's been so painful. I've got a flip on in East Dallas that I finally finished a week and a half ago. My wife sold it literally twice within uh, 12 hours at 5% below above list. And I, I screwed up and we'd been using apparently the people's gas from before we bought it. I'd never put the gas in my name. And then it got cut off the day before the inspection. Oh, jeez. 
and so then Atmos comes out and they test the line and they say, oh, you've got a leak. So now I've got a yard line leak that I got to replace. I'm about to lose one buyer, but I got a backup offer. So, I mean, I'm fine with that, but it's like, of course that happens on Monday before Thanksgiving because that's when that happens, right? It doesn't happen on Monday in July. Uh, it happens Monday of Thanksgiving when you want to take the whole week off. Um, and then I've got this rent house that my property manager really just screwed the pooch on. Uh, and he, uh, they rehabbed it completely wrong. And they were trying to talk me into taking this $1,450 a month rent. I said, guys, this thing, the comps are 1,800, 1,900 bucks. I mean, so my wife and I, this was probably two months ago, we drive over there and it's a catastrophe. I mean, it's still got three inches of fall in the foundation. There's cracks in the wall. I mean, it's, it, it was a slumlord rental rehab. So we had to make them completely redo it. They finally finished it last week. And guess what? We rented it for 1850, uh, you know, in, in less than a week. Uh, so that's just been a big headache. And now we got to go back to the property manager and fight with them because I'm not paying for the rehab twice. You know, I mean, I, I, I am not going to pay for his foundation guy that did it wrong and my foundation guy that did it right. So uh, it's just, it's another, just, it's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a fight. Uh, we got another rental that we bought the same week as this other rental in September. I talked about it at the first meeting. Well, then out of nowhere, uh, well, we had the property manager rehab one of them, the one in Irving, and then my wife rehabbed the one in Garland. The one in Garland was a bigger rehab and she finished it in three weeks. And it was funny because she emails the property manager like, hey, you can put this on the market now. And that same week, they were just starting the other one that they had had for three weeks. Jeez. So, you know, it's just another struggle with the property manager. So now we've got, Rod was talking about vacancies. We've got three vacant rentals that are brand new. One, we just signed a lease on. The other one, we've already got an app on. The other one's only halfway fixed and it's been like three months. Uh, so I kind of, Rod, I kind of did what you did. I just took on, so at one point in time, three weeks ago, I had a flip, three rentals, my new Airbnb property in San Antonio, which I'll talk about in a second, and I'm remodeling my pers new personal residence that I'm moving into, which includes building a pool, completely renoing the house, landscaping, irrigation, the whole nine, it's a three acre piece of property. And it was just, but it's so funny, because here we are, it's the day before Thanksgiving, and there's so much light at the end of the tunnel, because two weeks from now, I will have no rehab projects going whatsoever. Uh, and everything should be leased by then. Well, we'll have the Airbnb in San Antonio, but you know, that's, we just kind of, we were trying to find contractors in San Antonio. And for some reason, everybody just saw me as the rich guy from Dallas that was buying property in San Antonio. And the bids were just insane. I got a bid for $20,000 to rewire a house. And I, I, it was just insane. Uh, so I finally just decided we would finish up our rehabs here and we're just going to send our crew down to fix the house and let them stay in the house and pay their gas and their meals and their lodging because, I mean, we'll probably save 50% off the bids we were getting. But that's fun. I got the Airbnb permit. It's a really cool 1915 uh, craftsman style house. Uh, it's in a really up and coming neighborhood. We bought it for 200. It appraised for 330. We're probably going to spend 40 to 50, and that includes all the furniture and everything. And uh, we'll probably be able to get 160 to 180 a night. Uh, so, and it's two blocks from my son's college. So when we go down there, we'll have a place to stay. His senior year, he can live in the house. But it's in an area of San Antonio that reminds me of the Elm Streets here in Dallas. But it's really an up and coming. Tudor, craftsman style neighborhood. I know every city has them. Uh, I mean, this is a house five years from now, probably be worth half a million bucks. Uh, and we're gonna make good cash flow and it's gonna appreciate. We've got all of our financing worked out, but we're gonna refi with RCN. What they do is they take the, the monthly market rent to size the loan 
unless you can find Airbnb operators that will give you a 12 month rent roll. If they'll give you a 12 month rent roll, they allow the appraiser to use that as their market rents. So I'm kind of in between, I think what I'm going to do is just hold it in cash for 12 or, or interim financing for 12 months, establish the rent roll, and then I can refi off of my own rent roll and it will give me a much higher loan amount. But, you know, we'll just see how, where we end up with everything. We bought it right. So, you know, we may be able to refi off the market rents and only leave 30, 40 grand in the deal. And if that's the case, we'll probably just go ahead and refi there because uh, it's, you know, long-term probably cheaper than keeping it in, in, in the 8% financing that we get from residential capital partners. Uh, but, you know, it's just, it's, it's, we looked up three weeks ago and I'm just telling you it, it, my wife was laughing at me because I was spending my entire days managing rehabs and it's like the thing I hate the most. I just, I, this morning I had to get up. I was planning on hanging out. My son drove home from college late last night and I had to get up and go meet a tile guy to let him into my personal residence. And then the wood floor guys finally showed up. They were supposed to be there Monday. So they show up today. So that's why I was late to this call or I had to dial in from my phone because I was dealing with contractors and, and, and vendors and, uh, uh, we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna have to look for a new property manager come January. Someone that can really handle the make readies better. And uh, uh, we've agreed. My wife and I will never remodel a personal residence again. Although I'm sure we will. Uh, and uh, any flips from now on, I will not get involved. She's gonna handle them uh, holistically because it's just it's been a major distraction. I mean, my inbox is up to 2,500 emails. Uh, and I used to keep it below 500. It's kind of always my gauge of how busy I've been uh, because I move everything I've already kind of worked over to a processed folder. So uh, I'm so behind and I'm so just not overwhelmed, but I think just it, it, it's made me a little unhappy. So much time dealing with the frustrations of rehabbing. So. And it's hard to give up the rehab though, because you know Jim was talking about the good profit from those flips, and Sean, you were talking about the profit from the flips, and Rod's getting rid of half a million dollars, but he's probably going to make a hundred. So it it's so addicting, man. This one in Dallas, I mean, even with everything that went wrong, we're going to make 40 G's, and you know, you do that. That's the goal. The goal is to get to where we do rehabs like that, one every other month. Because, you know, if we can make a quarter million dollars a year flipping, a, you know, six, eight houses and still grow our rental portfolio at one or two, at least one a month, I think then we can find some balance as, 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 as a family. Oh, and by the way, that was all during football season when I was traveling every weekend to see my son and coaching my son, my little son, three nights a week and coaching his game on Saturdays. It was just oh my god they, we say that we want to be entrepreneurs to you know live the life we want but the last three months it's just been it's been a constant just i don't even want to say kicking the you know what every day uh but now it's actually worked out perfect i'm complaining to you guys today i'm sorry but it's actually worked out perfect because this this is my favorite week of the year thanksgiving week and it's my favorite month of the year thanksgiving to christmas and in our plate that I think we'll be able to uh, just kind of enjoy each other and our time and focus on finishing our personal residence, which is, I'm very happy about what we're doing there. It's going to be a great place. Sean, you saw the barbecue setup we got going there. I'm going to have a big cabana by the pool. So that'll be a happy finishing rehab I'm managing in December. And then the Airbnb is something that's exciting to me because it's different. New. It's new. It's high cash flow. And it's a new market because, I mean, we bought this house for 70 cents on the dollar off MLS in San Antonio. You can't do that in Dallas. Like, I mean, you can, but you're in the hood. You know, you can't buy a $300,000 house for 70 cents on the dollar off MLS. But we did in San Antonio. So 
uh, I'd like to do more in San Antonio, I think, next year. And I told my wife, we may focus our flipping down there uh, because uh, if we could find a couple good contractors, I've reached out to some of my home investors buddies, you know, if we could find a couple good contractors down there, I think the margins would be wider, the competition is less, and love going to Texas Hill Country, so uh, it's kind of, that's, that's all the craziness I'm working on in a nutshell. Uh, you know what I'm going to do, Tim? I'm going to buy you a drone for Christmas so that you can go and shoot video overhead of your house during all these renovations and when you're barbecuing, and then you can post it on video. <laughs> Andy, do not buy me a drone because I've had four of them, and I break them within an hour. <laughs> I, I, oh, that's so funny. I, I, I fly drones like I'm a fighter pilot, man. I mean, I, there's, there's just – it's the reason I can't have a motorcycle, right? Because I would kill myself in one day. Hey, I one tried. <laughs> but, hey, Andy, we didn't uh, cover you. What all do you got going on, buddy? Oh, man, you know, you and I have been working really hard on the insurance product. Um, we had some challenges this year a little bit with the renewal and the master policy. Um, the property industry has gotten very, very volatile. We probably have the best product nationwide for single family residential um, up to a fourplex, sixplex. We probably, we will, if, if November and December come around like we expect, we'll write $20 million in property this year. And that's pretty good. It's a little bit above our goal. And we're going to keep going and keep pushing. And again, our, you know, our product includes loss of rents, liability, million dollars per location. Um, broad form, replacement cost, all those things that make something worthwhile. For the guys that are fixing and flipping, we don't have a vacancy clause and we have a builder's risk provision. We, you and I literally developed the best product in the nation and it's, it, it, the results have shown it in the numbers this year that we're probably gonna write $20 million in property, easy. So um, we're having a good year. Uh, if anybody has any references or if you have an institutional um, portfolio of over 30 properties, you know, as you know, we've done it um, twice this year, or actually about to maybe do a third one, um, we can go and develop something personal and, you know, dial in different types of coverage as you want them. But, yeah, we're having a good year, man. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, so we Andy, 10 uh, minutes left. Uh, anybody uh, want to uh, – anybody got anything, follow-ups? Anything from what anybody said? So, Andy, on your commercial product, uh, is that who are you placing that through? We we don't have a commercial product per se. In the typical old school um, rental property insurance industry, they would say that if you have more than five houses, it's now commercial. We don't really work it that way. Right. Um, Tim and I have developed this out of his expertise in real estate and my expertise out of insurance, both over 20 years plus. Um, we pulled that out of the traditional semantics of calling it commercial. And so uh, we call it more, we have two, two business models. If you're a individual, you know, you got the person that's got a regular job, they're going to go and they got five, seven houses, whatever they go through our retail portal and everything. The institutional investors, that, you know, they have, you know, 20, 30, 40, just quoted one with 70 houses. We can go and do something that's custom made that we go to Lloyd's through. Okay. So we, I try to go, I, I get phone calls quite a bit with that terminology because people um, that have been investing for years and when they first started out, well, now you're commercial, you know, you're commercial insurance. Ah. Uh, no, that's not how we work it. And we pulled it off of that grid specifically um, because that model did not work for the people like that are on this phone call. So, uh, Sean, I'll tell you, we, we, we don't do well on multifamily. Uh, you know, Lloyd's of London actually doesn't like that space right now for some reason, mm -hmm. according to what we're hearing. Um, but like your deal that's currently separate properties but one day you're going to make it all one i think we'd be andy would be a good solution on the front end but then once you got it replatted rezoned and all that you'd want to find there's better options out there uh for yeah, multi family, especially with the reason why the reason why multifamily, the reason why multifamily gets crushed 
is because of class action liability suits. Mm -hmm. So you have, you know, 35 tenants in a single building and that building goes south or something, then they all class action under the liability and it hits the umbrella. And so that's the reason why they don't like that space a lot of times. And so it's a lot different. I used to write a lot of multifamily um, when I had my agency before Tim and I got together. And it's, it's a difficult process and program to go and find decent rates on. It's not easy. The single family, you're going to have, and that's one of the reasons why we have 1 million liability per location because it's an individual location with an individual situation and you don't run into a situation where you got multiple claimants on one property. That's where the multifamily on the insurance program gets south. Uh, like on the single family home, uh, I've seen many investors really get hurt on the vacancy clause. Uh, so Just like talked to one this that morning. You know, that you don't mm -hmm. have the vacancy clause. That's a pretty big deal. Loss of rents is a big deal. So, yeah. I just talked to one this morning where she um, and her husband, they got three little properties in Fort Worth. And they had one that they were remodeling a little bit vacant. They had it attached to their homeowner's policy. They had a claim on it. Somebody came in and stole a bunch of stuff. And they came, the insurance company and said, uh, this thing's been vacant for over 60 days and we deny it. It hurt them bad. Hurt them about 60 grand. Yeah. And so wow. that's when we designed this, this product that you don't have a vacancy clause. It makes a big difference when that one point and it kills your cash flow. Uh, this is Jim. I got a couple, um, couple little things here. Um, I wanted to follow up on the, uh, my, the, the storage training is uh, Mike Wagner. It's called the Storage Rebellion. Uh, it's $295 um, geared towards the real small storage units. So if you're looking for the big ones in the big cities, uh, that, that, that would be different. And I, I do have a name. Uh, uh, reach out to me and I can get that for you. Uh, but the small ones, which is what I'm looking for. Uh, does it, cover, does it cover building new ones? Uh, it really doesn't. That's not what he does. He's, he's buy, buy existing and uh, do a turnaround, which is a good fit for me because I'm trying to buy stuff in the half million to million, under a million. Um, but, but there's a lot of stuff out there on the uh, you know, building from scratch. But then you got the cost of waiting to fill up the facility. A uh, couple other little things. Uh, uh, I bought the uh, Logitech C270 uh, webcam for 19 bucks on Amazon. So plug and play. So I finally threw out my 20 year old uh, uh, recorder that I had that, that I couldn't get software for. Uh, I, the Facebook group that I signed up for is uh, group slash Tim. Uh, is that the right one? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, hang on. Let me, I'll look. Okay. I'll look and then, Keep talking. and while you're doing that, um, we talked about maybe doing a face to face in Dallas semi annually. I was going to bring that up. Uh, yeah, because, because I have travel, uh, travel and, uh, you know, travel costs and, and stuff. So I need some warning. <laughs> I'm thinking about making it like a, I, I'd like a uh, February and uh, uh, kind of a February August schedule, like that way it's like an every six months, and uh, uh, you avoid kind of the peak vacation uh, times. I'm leaning toward, uh, but I know some people can't do weekdays, so uh, I'm I'm glad you brought that up, Jim. Um, uh, the, 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 the secret Facebook group is facebook.com slash groups slash R-E-I-M-M-S. So like R-E-I masterminds plural. Uh, let me see. I think I have a way to share URL. Yes, I do have a way to do that. Share. So that's it right there. Facebook.com slash groups slash R E I M M S. Uh, what what email do you use for Facebook, Jim? I can type you in right now. 
uh, Jim at, I don't know. I, I, get on face, I get on Facebook every six months. All right. Uh, so anyway, but the uh, the more warning we get for uh, a specific day and the weekdays, I I, I like better um, versus the weekends. But you know that's up to the group. Yeah. So I'll 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 get an email out uh, th today with this recording, but I'll also float a couple dates and ideas uh, out there uh, because I'd like to just make it a you know where everybody gets here on like a Tuesday and. We meet all day Wednesday, and then people go home, and uh, our weekends aren't interrupted uh, kind of thing. It, and it'll probably be closer to the airport next time because there are, there are some travel issues with uh, – we got a group, we got some guys in uh, the Midwest and uh, New York and uh, California. Hey, uh, all airport. I thought we were going to your new pool. <laughs> well, I don't think we can fit 20 people at my new pool in February. Uh, that, that, that seems very uncomfortable to me. Very, very uncomfortable. We'll rent out the YMCA pool. <laughs> well, I, I think I'm just going to make it closer to the airport. That way, people, uh, I, I wanted to have it in Rockwall. I didn't have to travel that much, but... I think it's better to get closer to the airport. What I'm really thinking about is like up in Plano, kind of that legacy West area where there's all the shops and restaurants and new stuff, because I think we could all have a good time with our families if we planned it right. Uh, uh, hey, hey, Rod, Tim. Pr Rod Priscilla. Yeah. Boy, it's up there. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a uh, Jim K J I M K zero zero eight. at yahoo.com uh, so if anybody else is watching this recording and they haven't found the secret group uh, email me with your Facebook email and uh, I'll be able to add you directly uh, Jim I just uh, just you should you should get an email invite uh, with that email address okay thank you uh, all right guys well I hope everybody has a happy Thanksgiving Anybody happy got anything else to disconnect? Thank you, Tim. Hey, Thank I, you. Yeah, I have a happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for putting it together, Tim. Yeah, and um, just one more thing. On um um I got a good lead for a mobile home part in Corsicana. I'm not um I don't know anything about mobile homes, so so if anybody's interested, just reach out to me and um I'll send you that information um information on it. Priscilla? Great. Um, possibly. It's a little far from home. Well, but yeah, but, you know, hey, I don't – I mobile home parks – so I'll, I'll say this to the group because this is something that I'm looking for, alternative ways to invest in real estate that don't involve me spending $10,000 a month on postcards chasing the same dang deals that everyone else is in Dallas. So mobile home parks and building self-storage – along major arteries in the Texas area is something I'm very interested in. So I asked you about building the new uh, self-storage, Jim, because out here where I live in Rockwall, there's Interstate 30 that goes, it's kind of the I-30 corridor. And, and we lost it, Tim. In 30 frozen. minutes of downtown Dallas, there's a billion dollar what? We lost you for a minute, but you're back. Oh, yeah, there's a multi-billion dollar development going in in our town. And so I was thinking about buying, you know, oh. 10 to 15 acres uh, about 10 miles out, out of town in the county, either doing a mobile home park or a self-storage, sitting on the land for five to seven years, because I think, I think our land and houses in this I-30 corridor is about to go through the roof. Uh, it's just kind of when I look at development trends and once 190 is completed. So even that Corsicana development, Rod, is it is it near the highway? It's right off the highway, right off of hmm. Business 45. Yeah, so that's something I'd want to look at if I could find a 
a, maybe a deal partner that was used to managing them. Uh, you know, I could put some capital in on something like that. If there's someone in the group like Priscilla that has some experience uh, managing and, 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 and uh, maintain, or at least, you know, could help get the structure right. So yeah, Rod, why don't you uh, send that around to the group? Because that's, that would be my ideal situation would be, we have 40 to 50 people with money and deals in this group that uh, we could all do things. I mean, Jim, if, you find the right self storage thing up there in Pittsburgh. I, I mean, I don't mind investing out of town. Uh, it's something that I, I kind of think is the smart move because Dallas, the, the competition's so high and the prices have, and, and, the, and the, uh, the yields have contracted so much. Uh, you know, if I could spend the same amount of money and make twice as much somewhere else, uh, uh, I, I feel like uh, it's something I've got to be looking at to grow well, yeah, as, a person, and like as, an, as an investor. Absolutely. Sean reached out to me about his Florida gig because we had a conversation at the, the meeting about my brother, uh, my, excuse me, my cousin that's in Florida. I mean, I appreciated it very much. It just wasn't in the right position for me. So that's awesome. Rod, what is your phone number? Can you just do it it's, that way? Yeah, it's uh, 214-769-5091. Five zero nine one. There's a, a gal that has just bought a mobile home park that I'd looked at and talked to the owner about five years ago. That's real close. It's actually in Lake Worth here by me. And um, they're looking to do possibly another one. Uh, they bought this one within their IRA. So I will um, okay. ask her to maybe pass on, I might just pass on the information to her. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, so Tim, you. is that what the secret Facebook group is? That the perfect use of it? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. How many? How many of their? Uh, how many people are on that? There's 19 right now. Okay. Uh, and, and that will only be the people that have actually are paying active members of this group. Uh, there's a lot that just can't make the calls that listen to them afterwards. But uh, and, and we're. I need to when I send around the email about what day to meet in February or March, I'm also going to see if a better time of the day works for, because there's some people that still have W2 jobs that really take up a lot of their time and they can't meet it Wednesday at noon, but they, they have money and they have desire. And so we may alternate every other month where it's a nighttime call or a, a weekend call, or uh, I'll circle around some options and try to try to find what works best for the majority. Uh, uh, instead of what works best for me. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. On okay. the W-2 job person. Yes, yes ma'am. I pick up on Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. My wife's going to kill me if I don't get off this call. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. All right. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. Same to y'all. Bye.